just another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the senior pastor of Friendship West Missionary about the church down in Texas, Pastor Frederick Douglas Haynes. Pastor Haynes, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ricky Smiley. How you doing today? Man, blessed and highly favored. I'm sorry I forgot to come to the thing yesterday. I went home and went to sleep, but your donation is coming to help you feed the homeless, man. I really appreciate everything you do. I'm going to bless your cash app right now. On behalf of your frat brother, comedian Chico Bean, we're going in $500 a piece. Amen. To, 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 wow. <laughs> you didn't even warn me that we was doing that. <laughs> we had I'm going to give it, but I just... Uh, <laughs> Hey, Chico, Pastor Haynes, Pastor Haynes is your frat brother. Pastor Haynes is a member of oh, Alpha Pi Alpha. I am, too. Hey, hey, you know, but how you doing, good brother? What's so, up, man? What's up? So we donating $1,000. It's coming to Friendship West today to help feed the homeless, celebrating your 61st birthday. Man, I love you. I appreciate that, even though you, though you didn't give my frat brother a warning. No, no, there was no warning. There was no warning. It's just five hundred dollars. He don't know what I'm going through. He didn't even he didn't even consider what I may have needed you to place upon my life in prayer. He just threw my five hundred in it. But you got it, bro. We're gonna definitely do that. I appreciate everything that you're doing. Oh man. I got big pastor. I know that's right. I know that's right. I got you. I got you. So that's the word of the day, and that is even when you might not have it, God blesses you to give it because God has already been good to you, and now God wants to be good through you. And what God does is that God knows what's coming before you get to it, and so God will prepare you already for what God is preparing to do through you. That means though you think you don't have it, you just don't know what windows may open, what doors may open, what people may walk in your life who will do the right thing at the right time. And before you know it, you are ready to do what God calls upon you to do at just the right time. So go ahead, have a spirit of giving and generosity, and then watch God bless you with possibilities and opportunity you never saw coming because God is good like that. Ricky Smiley says that every day God is good all the time. And all the time God is good, especially when God can be good through you that's when god will be good to you yes Man, sir yes, like yes sir that's why god is going to be good through me by ricky giving me five hundred dollars on my behalf <laughs> <laughs> that is the way you do it pastor hayes thank you for that i'm over here worried not even knowing that my blessing is sitting oh, directly in front of me <laughs> That is it. Thank you, brother. I was lost, but now I am found. Ricky found. will be <laughs> donating $500 for me and from him. Because God is working through me, through him. Hey, I love it. I love it. Hey, Pastor Hans, if anybody want to give to help you feed the homeless, let them know how they can give. You can go to our website, friendshipwest.org, look up Faith Formula, because that's the vehicle through which we feed the homeless every single week. And we feed those who are hungry and make sure they get baths, showers, and haircuts, everything they need. So please help us. Go to friendshipwest.org, look up Faith Formula. Hey, hey, Pastor Haynes, I just want to introduce yes, comedian Chico Bean. He the next one, Pastor Haynes. Get ready. That's he your frat brother. One, Chico Bean, my frat brother. Hey, that's what's up. Hey, man, salute to you, brother, and just know that he is working through me, through Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> so all things done through me shall be done through Ricky first. Preach, Chico. <laughs> yes, preach, sir. Man, preach. Love you, Pastor <laughs> Haynes. Love you, love you. Well, Ricky's by the morning show right here. Let's get into some music. All right, John Rick's Modern Morning Show, 11 minutes after the hour. Got your front page. Eva, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. I'm your girl, Eva Marcel, here with a quick look this morning at your front page news. In very sad news, a nine-year-old boy who had been in a medically induced coma after being severely injured during the Astro World Festival tragedy died yesterday. The little boy who was from Dallas has now become the 10th and youngest victim of this tragedy. His family is now seeking at least $1 million in damages. Next, but certainly not least, President Biden and China's leader will hold a virtual summit this evening. Now, both countries are looking to reduce tension between them.
And last but not least, closing arguments are set today in the Kyle Rittenhouse murder trial. Rittenhouse is accused of fatally shooting two men and injuring a third during a racial justice protest last summer in Kenosha, Wisconsin. The 18-year-old Rittenhouse defense has argued that he fired in self-defense. All right, that was a quick look at your front page news this morning. For more, log on to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show dot com. Rock T, the sports genius. What's going down in sports? Already, man. Let's recap a little bit of football over the weekend, real fast. Shout out to the Dallas Cowboys, man. They Ooh. they demolished, do demolished the Atlanta Falcons, man. Man, do it. Forty three to three, man. Come on, man. Really? Everybody thought the Dallas Everybody. Cowboys. Did you see Malcolm Walker video? I didn't see Malcolm yet. No. <laughs> God. New England Patriots, they demolished Cleveland 45 to 7. What's up with the Pittsburgh Steelers, man? Tying with Detroit Lions in overtime. So Detroit Lions still haven't won a game, but they got that tie. Tampa Bay Buccaneers lose to Washington. So big up to the Washington football team. Arizona loses to Carolina in the return of Cam Newton. Cam didn't play much, but he scored a touchdown. Uh, of course, Arizona Arizona was out there star quarterback Kyler Murray. So, of course, that's that's one of the reasons right there. College football, Cincinnati is still undefeated, Rick. They 10-0. They ranked number five. Oklahoma lost to Baylor. So you can eliminate them out of the equation. Michigan beat Penn State. Ohio State beat Purdue. So if the playoffs started today... Cincinnati will still be on the outside, and they will probably put Michigan in. You know who's scary? Who? Ohio State and their quarterback. He is a beast. Come on, Super dog. Dave. Am I wrong? They 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 will be going to the playoffs. They're yeah. going to the playoffs. Yeah, they'll be in but there. I, I don't trust them yet. Don't put but them their there defense. Yet. Yeah, I don't trust them at all because who they play? They lost right. to Oregon, right? Right. And they went on a roll after that. But who have they beaten? The next right. few weeks are their big test. Michigan okay. is coming up, baby. Michigan is coming That's up, gonna baby. That's going to be a good one. Yes, sir. Gary with the T. What's up there, Pippin? All right, y'all. It's being rumored, y'all, that Cardi B may be under a severe depression watch, y'all. Now, it's being reported, y'all, that Cardi B, honey, took to Twitter to show off the growth of her hair following the birth of her son. Now, they're saying, y'all, that the Grammy Award-winning rapper took a picture showing her long inches on Twitter to tell her how she's been consistent with her hair mask routine and drinking alkaline water, y'all. But they're saying, y'all, that Cardi B post, honey, a lot of people got very upset about it and start lashing out and giving her back. Why? Like saying. They said, because, first of all, you are mixed. And Cardi wasn't feeling the negativity and made an Instagram post regarding the backlash while sharing photos and videos of her hair over the years. And in current states, they're saying y'all that the Bronx native wrote, why every time I post my natural hair, I hear you're a mix. She said, you're supposed to have long hair, they're telling her. She said, but that's not true, and it's very misleading, y'all. She said, honey, and being mixed doesn't mean your hair is always long and curly. And she went on and on, and a lot of people say, honey, they, they, she's definitely been under the uh, um, surveillance because they're watching it because, you know, when people start come saying that you're mixed and you got long hair and you're showing it off, it's like kind of thumbing up, nosing down, whatever, to people with curly hair and afros and, and a lot of people just not happy with her right now so she oh, might need to cut man. her hair off honey and just wear afro to appease the people so we're going to follow this story and keep i'll keep you all in post it with it because it's just sad all right, y'all. The color of the day, honey, is one of my favorite colors. My color of the day, y'all, is winter mint. On the high end, you say winter mint, and on the low end, you say beautiful powder blue, y'all. That's the color for the day. Brad, what you got coming up in the hot spot? Coming up next in the hot spot, I got more on the news about the Astro World situation. Up next is the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, 29 after the hour, y'all. Time for the hot spot. What up, Brad? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tad Tad, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into this thing. Oh, man, Ezra Blunt, the nine-year-old who was on life support days after being trampled at Astro World, has passed away. Oh, man, Ezra's dad, Tristan Blunt, Tristan Blunt, told ABC 13 that his son was a huge fan of Travis Scott, saying he was so stoked he was ready to go. Uh, the death toll from the concert is now 10. Meanwhile, Scott's lawyer, Ed McPherson, has revealed that the rapper is locked away at his Houston home. And according to TMZ, McPherson said about the tragedy, this would be devastating to happen anywhere. But the fact that it did happen in Houston, which he loves, 
He has so many people there that he's close to. It's particularly devastating. And he continued. He's been at his house locked away since this happened and not coming out at all. He's just trying to get in touch with the families through email addresses that he set up. Uh, McPherson also spoke on TMZ's claims that Scott had been told to end his set early, but he was not told why or that people were in dire need in the audience. McPherson said, my understanding is that he didn't know, and I'm sure uh, he didn't know who who told him to wrap it up early, but this was my understanding, yes, that he did not understand the full scope of it until much, much later. Now, Scott's new spokesperson, former Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, said in an interview with CBS Mornings, uh, that the idea that Travis could have stopped the concert is ludicrous. She said they have a 59-page operations plan, and it clearly says that the only two people that could stop the concert or have authority to stop the concert were the executive producer and the concert producer. She continued he was not responsible for this but wants to be responsible for the solution. Uh, later on, y'all will be talking to entertainment lawyer Keisha Perry Walker to break down this case and who may be held accountable. The total number of lawsuits have now reached over two. Hundred. Oh my goodness, that is a wow. lot of lawsuits. Oh, wow. what? Uh, yeah, it's sad though. I, I really. I just don't even even <laughs> see uh, years from now the resolve in that in, entire Man. issue, uh, whatever. But <clears throat> I do hope when they have a uh, phenomenon act, uh, acts like Travis Scott mm -hmm. that they're able to set up some kind of pods to just where people would not be able to push that can bind people into one area yeah. to keep to keep people safe. It's some people like if you go see Anita Baker, you know the older people are not going to push, but right. but stuff like that they need to have those 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 barriers that they can't cross and have security within it just to keep people safe yeah. because yeah. younger people are more excited. So, you know, yeah. I just hope that that has a resolve. And I think there were some type of barriers, but them kids pushed through that stuff trying to get to the front. They're you still, know? yeah, those little gates, those little gates weak, but, it, but I'm, I, I, I had this, this I, I got it in my head. I can explain it kind of like a symphony orchestra. Yeah. Uh, then they sit in these little pods and you yeah. just can't go forward. Yeah. Right. And, and then they, they open up the little gate to let people out, let them in and out. Kind of control, like really, really yeah, control. Yeah, like little sections of yes. something. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh, Lord. All right, y'all, moving on. While hosting a premiere for her new film, Bruce, Halle Berry has called Cardi B the queen of hip-hop. Okay, Halle revealed and said that Cardi is the executive producer of the film soundtrack. She explained, I reached out to Cardi B because she's the queen of hip-hop. Now, Winnie Harlow seemingly responded to Halle's comment saying that Nicki Minaj is the one and only queen of hip-hop while presenting at the MTV's uh, 2021 Europe Music Awards last night. So Cardi responded to the hoopla on Twitter saying, I know how some of you girls like to tussle over this type of childish stuff, but Halle's movie Bruised is dropping that she directed herself on Netflix on November 24th, the first female rap movie soundtrack. We produced together and it's coming out this Friday. So I'm glad she didn't even feed into none of that because everybody, every woman in hip hop can be the queen of hip hop. It's right. all good. You know what I'm saying? We don't need enough beef because it ain't enough female MCs already to, to, to start no man. All right, y'all, we're going to wrap up the hot spot on not that note. But coming up next, we got Rock, oh, Lord, we got Rock T's joke of the day. <laughs> Is it going to be funny, Rock T? Isn't it always brick to tat No, <laughs> no, and <laughs> hell no. <laughs> Yeah, All right, y'all, hit us up for the wake-up calls at 866-9-RICKY. That's 866 9 R I C K E Y. The time now is 26 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, Ricky Smiley Morning Show, a, uh, 13 before the top of the hour. We got the one and only Dr. MJ Collier that's been keeping us up to date and safe with all of our uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID information. Dr. Collier, good morning. Good morning, Ricky Smiley. Dr. MJ Collier, your family physician here with your... Coronavirus update and some good information, Ricky, about the question that we got last week about long haulers. I did some research over the weekend and got some new information I want to share with the morning show listeners. So, Ricky, women with long COVID may never be able to exercise like they did before. Long COVID or the lingering side effects from a coronavirus infection often leave patients with dozens of symptoms, including extreme fatigue. A new study just released shows that women who become COVID long haulers may never be able to exercise at the same pace again. Women have reported developing heart rate irregularities after their COVID-19 infection, impacting exercise and recovery from physical activity. So persistent heart and lung problems in women 
with long COVID, can result in shortness of breath or joints and muscle aches. Researchers say that men with COVID-19 appear to experience more severe symptoms and larger mortality rates. So men have more severe disease and they're dying at a higher rate. But this is the first time, Ricky, that scientists have found evidence that women are struggling more after the infection. So previous studies have shown that women are outnumbering men three to one in seeking treatment for persistent symptoms following a positive COVID diagnosis. So long haulers are outnumbering uh, in women's situations. So about 12 million people are considered long haulers now. They're suffering side effects from the virus months after their infection. And a new study, Ricky, not new to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show listeners, says, guess what? Probiotics could be a treatment. <laughs> the study published in the Swedish medical journal followed patients with brain fog and muscle soreness from COVID-19. And after 14 days on probiotics, they had improvement with both. So the coronavirus doesn't have a standardized treatment, and probiotics should not be used as a cure-all. This was a quote by uh, ABC 15 Health Insider, Dr. Shad Marbosti, who said probiotics have been proven to help prevent illness. And even in children, they've shown that there's less absenteeism, less cold and flu during the flu season, and lower incidence of any infection for children that are placed on probiotics and boosting their immunity. So you've heard that on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, the big three, vitamin D, omega-3 fish oil, and probiotics to boost your immune system and help with now not just coronavirus, prevention of catching the disease and decreasing your chances of severity of disease, but also now as a treatment for long hauler syndrome. That's it, Ricky. Wow. All right, let's go to the phones. You're on with Dr. MJ Collier. Good morning. Thank you so much, Dr. Collier. I was wondering, you mentioned natural immunity uh, being a factor, but does it vary depending upon the type of COVID? In other words, you've got the regular COVID, then you've got the Delta uh, variant. So are the immunities different depending upon the variant, and how does that impact whether you should get vaccinated or not? Thank you so much. Okay, well, let's get to the primary question. Yes, you should get vaccinated regardless, but natural immunity is a real phenomenon, whether you have the alpha variant, which is the original coronavirus, or even the delta variant, which is the one that we are suffering from right now. It's shown that natural immunity is long-lasting and protective regardless of whether you have a mild infection or moderate or severe disease. So you do get natural immunity, but the combination of natural immunity plus a vaccine gives you the greatest immune status and helps protect you from reinfection and hospitalization and death from the coronavirus. All right, you're on with Dr. MJ Collier. Good morning. My question with Dr. Collier is I am a teacher, and I was trying to see do I need to get the booster shot. I already took both of the shots. I wanted to know if I have to take the booster for that since we're working, since I'm working with kids. Okay, if you have no other health challenges, then you are fully immunized after two doses of particularly the Moderna, but even with two doses of the Pfizer. So booster shots, are, they're looking and finding and recommending now that everybody over 18 get booster shots. There's just no scientific reason to do that unless you have other health challenges. So if you're not suffering from autoimmune diseases or any other immunological system challenges, then you are fully immunized after two doses of regimens, and that's shown that, that that protection is long-lasting. It's showing that right now that after 10 months out, but that's just only in real-time measurements, it's probably much longer than that. And we've shown the natural immunity may even be lifetime. They've compared it now to having gotten the measles and re recuperated from the measles that you should have basic lifetime immunity from that. All right, Dr. Conley, let everybody know how you can be reached. Okay, Ricky, you can reach me on all social media at Ask ASK Dr. MJ. And uh, these are the opinions of Dr. MJ Collier, not those of Ricky Smiley, the Ricky Smiley Morning Show host or its production crew. Ricky, I want to solicit all the prayer warriors, uh, particularly Gary uh, and all of his uh, prayer warriors because uh, Mrs. Collier is having surgery today and we're about to head to the hospital now. So we want to make sure oh. that everything comes out all right with that. All right, man. Love y'all, man. I'll be praying for you. Okay. Thank all right, more Rick's Smiley Morning you, Show sir. coming up. Dr. MJ Collier. All right, Rick's Smiley Morning Show, seven minutes after the hour, Gary has a tea. And the color of the day. What up, Gary? Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Monday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. The prayer warriors, Ricky, y'all are definitely being solicited, y'all, for this young man. It's a very sad story. Um, his name is Karanji Calhoun, y'all. Now, he was most notable for his only, y'all, on-screen appearance, y'all, as the overweight son of Halle Berry and Sean Combs, y'all, in their 2001 film, 
Monsters Ball. Did y'all remember that movie, Monsters Ball? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where they're saying, y'all, he died and he was only 30 years old. Now, they're saying, y'all, that the child actor who garnered exceptional reviews, honey, in the Oscar Award when the movie was discovered through a GoFundMe, y'all, his mama put set aside, honey, she said, because they don't have enough money to pay him. Now, they're saying that he died Halloween Day, but um, they're still trying to get money to um, bury him and what have you. And now they're saying that um, Halle Berry and um, director Lee Daniels, they both gave $3,300 $94 each. And I was saying that the family was asking for a mere $14,000 to bury him. They said now they only had $11,500. Now, Ms. Berry spoke in an interview about, you know, working with Mr. Calhoun about how difficult, y'all, it was filming those abuse scenes. Because I remember she called him a little piggy and put him on the scale and did all kinds of stuff. And they're showing that right now. You can see that um, clipping. She said, he's still part of my life. She said, I felt it really important not to jump dust. Not to jump, dump, not to just dump him off. She said, due to this, to this poor kid and go. She said, but he's definitely still a part of her life or whatever. Now they're saying they met, he was not an actor or whatever. They found him in Louisiana and they um, put him in a movie. And Hallie said she would talk to him every day. And she said she would tell him, listen, she said, everything I do and say, she said, it's not real. She said, I really think you're wonderful. And he said, well, whatever you do to me, Miss Halle Berry, is going to be worse than what kids at the school do to me. Mm. And she went on and on and Aww. talked about it and stuff. Like she said, you know, it was shit, it was a sad thing, but she is definitely still mourning, you know, the loss. And hopefully the family get the money they need. They said because he um was one of six children and he leaves behind a ten year old son and a thirteen year old stepson. So y'all let's continue to pray for that family and hopefully they get the um, fourteen thousand dollars that they need to bury him because it's a very sad situation. Yeah, because Halloween was a, a while ago. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. You know, when you do those GoFundMe's and stuff, you know, it's you know up to the people how much they're going to donate and what they're going to give and whatever. $14,000 to bury a person. I mean, it don't seem like it's a lot, but evidently it is because the family still had, you know, as of this time, press time, haven't got the money to get it. So we're going to keep them lifted up in prayer. All right, moving on in other celebrity news, y'all. The baby, honey, he didn't call the DA cops, honey, on his little um, baby mama, Miss Danny Lay, honey. He said he tired of being in heated arguments. They had a big fight on social Lord. media, honey. And they said the cops was called, honey, and she was there milking the baby, and he was on his other side. Milking honey, the baby? Yeah, because the baby ain't up for three months, honey, she said. And, honey, mm -hmm. she was arguing with him on social media, and they say, honey, um, um, Danny Lay, she was asked to leave the mansion, honey, and he, should, he said he wanted a swiftly removal from the house and what have you. And, it just go on. on. <laughs> Y'all yeah, saw that video. It was oh, really sad. Uh, really? The way that, 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 young, that young lady, the way that young lady was sitting there uh, crying and stuff, and you can tell that she was really trying to uh, make the relationship work. But you know, it's just hard to hold down uh, one of the hottest rappers, and you got women throwing themselves at him, and he in his twenties or whatever. I, I don't know. It was a bad situation. I watched that entire video, and I just really feel sorry for the young lady. Uh, I hope that she finds. Uh, true, uh, some peace and some true love and some support for her kid and move on with her life because that, that's, that's, that's not the life. And then there's stuff like that mess, uh, young women up so bad by the time they yeah. get in their 30s, they don't be no good for nobody else because they be just totally right. distraught. I right. swear, uh, yeah. uh, I, I just hate that. I, it was, it, video really made me sad. Mm. Yeah, yeah, she's a first time mom too. So that it, that's a really hard space to be in. She's only three months postpartum. So, you know, it's it's, it's very sad. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep them all lifted up in our prayer. And while we lifting in prayer, let's continue to lift up Lala Anthony. I didn't realize they say she recently revealed that she underwent heart surgery earlier this year. Now, she told self that she found out that she had premature ventricular contractions in her heart, which caused an abnormally um, fast heartbeat. Now, she underwent surgery out back in June, and she said that her heart always had a fast heartbeat, but she never thought it was, honey, because of an underlying health issue. She explained that she said, quote, I felt my heart racing all the time, but because it's all I've ever really knew. She said, I didn't even know that, honey, it was necessarily something wrong. So, and she went on and on explaining, say how she was lightheaded, she felt pale and what have you and stuff. So, we've got to keep, oh, all the prayer words are definitely being solicited for all these people, y'all. All right, the Kahlua today is one of my favorite Kahlua's. My Kahlua today, y'all, is winter mint. On the high end, you say winter mint, and on the low end, just a beautiful light powder blue. That's your Kahlua for today. Y'all give it up for Gary with the tea. Oh! Welcome, call. Get in the 866 9 Rick at 866 9 R I C K E Y. Rick Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all. Rick Smiley Morning Show. Time for the Welcome Calls. Get in the 866 9 Rick. 24 after the hour. Here we go.
me calling from Columbia, South Carolina. I want to wake up my mother, my father, and my sister in Blackwood Middle School. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Good morning, good morning. I want to wake up Nadine, Naya, Tony, my grandbabies, Mimi says good morning, Kaylee, and Camden, Everett, Steve, Ryan, and Malik. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Hi, this is Quay, waking up my, both my baby dads that went missing for five years straight. Wake up, wake up, wake up. I want to wake up my wife, Shalon Pleasure, Miss Pleasure. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Good morning, I'm Danelli Agua. I call it from the STL, the little the show me state. Wake up, wake up, wake up. All right, y'all, the same as me and both of you. Bye. Macy's. Get early access to Macy's Black Friday specials right now while supplies last. Save big on fine jewelry, sweaters, adorable PJ sets for the family, and furniture. Plus, Star Rewards members earn rewards even faster during Star Money bonus days. Now at Macy's. All right, y'all. Bernie Shingles got your church and M's. Coming up next, Rick Smiley Morning Show. Boom. 29 minutes after the top of the hour, it's the Rick and Smiley Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, our favorite grandmama is back in the building, Miss Bernice Jenkins. Somebody sleeping in my bed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Jenkins. Nobody but Jesus. Uh-oh. Come on. Because he wake me up in the morning, sleeping in my bed. Yes. Nothing but the love of Sweet baby G. Ooh, yeah. Amen. All right now. Amen. All right now. Amen. The man in Janie. Yeah. I got your church announcement this morning. Govern yourself. Accordingly. Accordingly. Govern yourself. Accordingly. Accordingly. Now we need the church to pray for the pastor's granddaughter, Leola. Oh. Who turned three on Friday, but uh Ain't none of her baby teeth. Uh, yeah. Ain't none of her baby teeth or no hair grown in yet. <laughs> and folks say she looked like comedian earthquake in the Ooh, face. <laughs> and whoever saying it, you going to hell. And you need to stop. <laughs> On the sick and shut-in prayer list is Pastor's nephew, Roscoe, who got arrested on Saturday. You know Roscoe, Janie? Mm. You know Roscoe, don't you? He had to go to the, yeah. had to go to the ER. He had got to fighting with three sisters at the beauty supply store. <laughs> it never ends with it. Now, he won the fight, but suffered serious slap and scratch wounds to the face and neck. <laughs> but then he's resting at his mama's house right now. <laughs> yeah, baby, they went into windmills. That's a lot of slaps. <laughs> All three of them went into windmills. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and they, you, know, you know they strong, Janie. <laughs> yeah. That's like going through a car wash, all them slaps. <laughs> oh, Man, they slapped his skin off. <laughs> Looking like Freddy Krueger after that fight, Jamie. But anyway, <laughs> condolences to three members. Condolences, condolences. Condolences to three members of the Midget Choir oh. who passed away on last Thursday after they had got locked in the church van by mistake because they was they was up under the back seat shooting dice and smoking reaper. <laughs> And they all had gave their life to the Lord last month. <laughs> and all three caskets will be set up on top of the communion table by 9 a.m. on Saturday. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you can view the body and take communion. Uh, so they will have all 
<laughs> we have them up there. <laughs> So they had a choice of having three separate cats, gonna put all three of them in the same one to save money. <laughs> Two of them had insurance. So <laughs> the third one. <laughs> we want to thank Tom's car dealership for donating three PT Cruisers for the to carry the bodies over to the city. Janie, that's that from Goose Down Church announcement. Thank you so much. <laughs> Y'all have a great day, Janie. I'll call you. <laughs> so, Richard Donovan, the show, Chicken and Waffle, Mix, Roy Down, John Lyon on the one and two. What up, John? I'm good, man. Y'all, you know, just got to pick up everybody, man. And check me out in the clubs over the weekend. Of course, you'll make sure you me up on the Instagram at J-A-H. Lion Sound. J A H Lion Sound, Savannah State University owned. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, my, my pleasure, American. All right, man, Black Tony. Sorry, I, I, you gonna I'm start the week off like this, bro? Uh, that what I said, Sorry, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start I'm the week sorry. off like this. Sorry, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm exhausted right now. I can't even take it no more, Sorry. My family. I, Bro, you know we all got problems, right? Dad, I can't take it no more, though. Shot. There's too much on me. Everybody depend on me because I'm the most responsible person in my family. And everybody put they everything on me. You're the most me, responsible Shot. person in your family. You can't come to work. Yo, I can't imagine what everybody else is like. Shot, I know, Shot. That's what I'm saying. It's just, it's my great grandma, man. She, she's so immature. How old is your great grandma? 86. Yeah. She needs to grow up. What you mean? I got to take her to go get her two times. Why? Because she keep getting pregnant. Oh. You know, I got, shout out, I got an uncle that's three. I got another uncle that's seven. And I got another uncle that's 11. I open her because every time she get drunk, she get pregnant. Oh. Go How does the boyfriend? She be drinking that brown. Every time she drink that brown, she come on, come on, she pregnant again. <laughs> now I got to check her to get her two tired. Because they talking about she ain't too old for this. And she 86. Hey. 87. She just turned 87 on Friday. So, 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 so the, little, the little boy she got, those are your great uncles. <laughs> Yo. And how old are they? <laughs> hey, man, bye, man. So bye, man. Have a nice day, Black Tony. We'll see you tomorrow. Don't get no sick. Bye, man. <laughs> <laughs> More Rick's Mountain Party Show coming up. Richie, I think I'm falling in love with you. <laughs> yeah, give me Holly Court, uh, 55377. Hello, it's Daddy. Hey, darling, put Mommy on the phone. Yeah, Barbara, it's Richie. Yeah, look it, I ain't never coming home no more. Take it easy. <laughs> Wait here. Yeah, you ain't had no. You had no. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> boy, that's when you done had some fire right there, boy. Boy. Stay he away from that. He <laughs> told his son. Man. He <laughs> told his mama. Yo, hold it that rock. I ain't coming home no more. <laughs> I see. Take it easy. <laughs> He didn't even say, I love you, son. Yeah, man. He man. smashed them numbers hard. He said, put, put the mama named Barbie and put Barbara on the phone. He didn't even say, put your mama on the phone. They ain't never come home. <laughs> and then that tear rolled out of the back. <laughs> oh, man. Gary, what you got coming up next? Coming up next, y'all, free Chico. Chico the bar. Y'all, I'm going to tell you what's going on with him next. Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, five minutes after the hour, y'all, the same as being brought to you by My Computer Career. That's right. If you don't absolutely love what you do, go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation today and become an information technology professional in as little as four months. 
That's mycomputercareer.edu. What up, Gary? Good morning, Ricky. Good morning to you. It's Monday, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Chico DeBarge from the famous DeBarge family, y'all, was recently arrested. Now, they're saying, y'all, that the neighbors called the police to his trailer house because they said there was a lot of noise, weird noises going on and what have you. And when the police got to his wonderful trailer house, they're saying they found, honey, um, methamphetamines and other drug paraphernalia in Mr. DeBarge's um area so they decided to arrest him and bring him to jail he was placed on bond he got out of jail and whatever but they're saying you know it was funny because chico was ar arrested so many times before and he lied once before and tried to give his brother james name to get out of jail and what have you but they said he didn't try that this time he gave his real name and they brought him on in and they put him gave him a bond and released him but what's funny this man all the money they had he lived in a trailer house i mean i know trailers are fabulous and yeah, they, they, man, listen, man, when people go, uh, they get on drugs, they go into a uh, dark place. Yeah. And sometimes, man, getting arrested, going to jail is the some, the best thing for some of them because it'll save their life. Because yep. with the stuff that they putting in drugs now, if you get a hold mm -hmm. of some fentanyl, Ooh. it's a wrap. Yeah, It's a wrap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, man. so so we just hope that he get the help that he need and, and can get into some kind of rehab facility and get clean. Because uh, this ain't this ain't like it was 20 years ago. They are really oh. lacing fentanyl and stuff. And, uh, you know, we just don't want, want to see nothing happen to him. Yeah, because he had drug problems once before, at least a couple of times before. So some people just got years of just being sick, like decades of just, just being sick. You got yeah. people that just struggle with drugs and they can't yeah. get clean no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. Mm. All right. Well, speaking of being sick, Brent, your favorite male actor, honey, Mr. Dwayne Rock Johnson is in the news. He's being reported, y'all. They're saying, y'all, that water is squeezed out of the rock and into a water bottle. Now, it's being reported, y'all, that Dwayne Johnson says that's exactly what happens during his famous workouts, revealing in a new interview that we, honey, that he does, in fact, urinate in bottles at gyms. He said, um, he explained that it's not as what? weird as it, he said, it's not as weird as it sounds. He said, he said, oh, at least he tried to. He said, um, with, um, Esquire, he said, the WWE legend said he doesn't have a specific water bottle that he, re um, reuses as his portable bathroom. He said, but rather, he just uses old plastic bottles that he's finished with. Now, they're saying, uh, as for why he does it in the first place, he said, The Rock explained that there's just simply no bathrooms at the gym that he lifts weights in. He said, it's not just hot, sweaty, and dirty. He said of the facilities, but he said he just you know loves to do that, and that's what he does. Yeah. Now, Ricky, what did a plastic bag once upon a time? Yeah, no, I still use them. I you still them use them, those? I keep them in my glove compartment. They're called urinal bags. Mm -hmm. So when you're on the road, you out here driving on the highway, or if you're in a rush, you coming out of the grocery store. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm 50. You can't hold it all the time, <laughs> and you can just uh, lean over and uh, in the bag, the stuff that's inside of the bag turns it into a hard gel. And you just toss it in the trash, or, or you know, yeah. until you get to a trash can and wash your hands with your hand sanitizer, and be done with it. Because you going to know these gas station Ooh, bathrooms and stuff. Nasty. They are super nasty, mm. super nasty. And I don't, Especially I don't with play COVID with them. Out there. Absolutely, Ooh, right. I, I, I keep them in my office. I don't, I don't even like the bathrooms at the office. You just close your door and lock it. And you just go and get in your little corner, and you stand there and handle your business, and you just toss it in the trash. Because the same material that's inside of a pamper, mm. it, 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 ain't, it, ain't, it ain't no different. It's the same, the same material that hardens up that, that urine when you're, your baby in a pamper is, is, is what's in that plastic thing. You can buy them at, at Walgreens or CVS. They're called urinal bags. And for the ladies, you can uh, they got the wider opening, so you can squat when you come out of the club. <laughs> If you got a, if you got a straight aim, if you got that one homegirl that get really, really drunk, keep her from going behind the car, and she can squat and put that bag right there. And let me tell you, boy, that, that you'll help yourself. What? Take a lot of stress off your body. I gave you some, Special K. I got some. Brad, I, I gave you some. Oh, I ain't I gave you some. I got mine. Yeah, you're the, I, the, I gave you the ladies with the wide opening. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, them things be a lifesaver while y'all play. Yeah. I don't Brent. need no wide opening. I know how to aim, okay? <laughs> All right. All right. Aim the place. All right. Aim the place. All right, right now. You better tell them, honey. Honey. All right. <laughs> 
all right, baby. Oh, whatever. Okay, honey. That's all right, niece. Yes. Hey, baby, right. I'm telling you, you got to learn that when you've been going in them public bathrooms and stuff. Man. You don't want to sit on them toilets. I will, but baby. I and shoot then, it in the right place. Oh, and then, and then uh, you can go on Amazon and order the uh, toilet covers. They are biodegradable yep. toilet covers. They slide yep. on the whole toilet seat. Yeah. And, you know, just in case you have to go. So yep. I'm just telling you, man, you got to keep your little pack of stuff. Yep, you do. Right. Especially when you travel. Your to-go pack. <laughs> okay. And then you then you go to... <laughs> And then you go to uh, uh, and get the aromatherapy stress relief uh, body spray from yes. uh, Bath Bath Body Works. And them Works. candles, them look, 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 look at here. Look at here. Swear, <laughs> hey, every time I put my bag in the overhead bin on the plane, I kind of sneak it out and I I spray it twice. And, it and then I leave so the overhead good. bin and just throw it in the bag, and all of a sudden. The area where you sit smell good the entire yep. flight, yes. and, the, and nobody know where the smell coming from. Either yep. that or some of that gas station blunt spray. There Come you on go. Now. <laughs> on your seats. Come on now. Ram on the seats. You better yeah, tell you them what it is. baby. Toilet tree one oh one, honey. Yes. All right. The color today, honey, one of my favorite colors. My color today is winter men. On the high end, you say winter men. On the low end, you say beautiful powder blue. That's your color for today. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Gary with the Z. <laughs> All right, 11 minutes after the hour, y'all. More Rick and Smile, the morning show coming up. All right, Rick and Smile, the morning show, 24 minutes after the hour, y'all. Uh, uh, I'm sure y'all know by now, 10 days ago, on November the 5th, uh, Travis Scott Astro World Concert became one of the deadliest live music events in history, leaving 10 people dead and many more healing both physically and mentally. Uh, now, many people are questioning who is to blame for this catastrophic event as more than 100 lawsuits have already been filed. Now, joining us this morning uh, is attorney Keisha Perry Walker with the Perry Law Group, an entertainment law firm based in Atlanta. Now, her past and present clients include various artists and producers and songwriters, and she also served as production legal on season three and four of the Ricky Smiley uh, For Real. Attorney Walker is going uh, is going to help us break down some of the Astro World tragedy that happened and who could be held liable. Uh, Miss Keisha, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. How are you? Hey, I'm good this morning. Thank you uh, at short notice for joining us. Uh, uh, I really want to try to unpack some of this stuff now. The Houston Police Chief Troy Fenner has said during a press conference that he voiced concerns about public safety to Travis Scott and the team prior to the show. Now, why do you think the concert was still allowed to go on? Well, I think part of it is money. Um, and Chief Finner did discuss that based on some issues that happened during Astroworld in 2019. And he did voice concerns about the crowd control, but at the end of the day, the police does not control who rents the venue, if that makes sense. They are there for control um, and unless it was indicative early on that it could be a public nuisance or that there could be this caliber of tragedy which no one expected then the police really wouldn't have had the authority to shut it down but you have venues um, that are owned by Live Nation who was a promoter and they get to say the say so as to who does and does not perform at their venues well, from what you've seen, was there adequate security and medical personnel for this event? So from my research, they are stating that there was not um, adequate crowd control. So when these type of events are being done, it is a great deal of a logistical feat that has to be done right. um, just in doing some of the research and also experts who work with this type of crowd mm -hmm. and we're talking about it was 50,000 people there mm. um, the venue is I think the the max capacity of that venue is 200,000 so we're talking about a fraction of what the venue could actually hold mm. but for a crowd of this size, and we know that when we are talking about hip hop, um, you know that's that's very different than if you are going, um, you know, to 
a Daniel Caesar concert, right? right? It's a different type of crowd. It's a different type of energy. So you have to prepare for those things. Um, and I don't know that that was adequately prepared for, especially considering that with past concerts for Travis Scott, it has gotten a little out of hand. Mm. Now, Attorney Perry Walker, question. There has been a lot of backlash as to why it is Travis or the event producers or Houston Police Department did not just stop the show. Now, there's a video that you can see how close the ambulance was actually in front of the stage while they were trying to exit the video, the venue. And in the background, Travis was still performing. So in your opinion, could Travis be held accountable for not stopping the show completely? So that is a base um, of several lawsuits that are being filed, stating that had the show been stopped immediately, there could have been more of a preservation of life as well as injury. Um, while there were parties who made the call to keep the show going, thinking that the crowd would have become irate. Um, you know, the, the hard thing in all of these situations is we all have the benefit of hindsight about what could have been done or what should have been done. Honestly, it, if the show would have been stopped, I don't know what the impact that that would have had based on right. how bad the crowd surge had already become at that point. Right, right. It's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a hard call on either side. Um, you know, but personally, if I am in the venue and I am advising my clients, I'm advising them to stop the show immediately, period. Um, just because, again, at some point, exactly what we're dealing with right now, people began to look at it as you didn't care about your fans, you were concerned about the performance, you know, making sure that all of that was done, and that's where the issues come in. So if I'm there and I'm noticing that there are multiple issues going on, we're going to pause the show immediately. That's the call that I would have made. Right. Okay, so... Look, so and, and with honoring the refunds for anybody who would like to get their money back from the event, Travis has said that he was going to do that. But now there's some legal representatives saying that it's just that's just a ploy to get people to waive their right to legal action later on. So if people get a refund on their tickets, are they waiving their right to sue? It depends on whether or not our great waiver of liability language comes with that refund. Because sometimes, you know, it's just like if you guys have gotten those notifications that say, hey, there's a class action suit by you accepting this sum and this amount, you waive all other rights in this matter. It depends on right. if that refund is attached to that type of language whereby you're saying, hey, this is compensation for any emotional distress injury that you have received in the course of right. attending this concert now, so it's possible now i have to ask you this now if you if you're defending travis scott or whatever what, what would be your first and next move so first and foremost um <laughs> the the biggest thing with travis is right now i feel like he has expressed a position of empathy but the more that he talks, the more that they're going to use not only what he's saying now, but things he has said and done in the past against him. My first line of defense at this point is to have him to be quiet. Mm. Right. That is the most important thing, in my opinion, simply because when, when you have already expressed your condolences, he has offered to pay for the funeral services because again we are talking about one human that is showing empathy and sympathy for the loss that of another human being's life multiple as well as injuries and these are fans right however if I am an attorney on the other side, Ooh. every single move, every single every single thing that he says, mm -hmm. I am looking and 
creating a strategy as to how I can use that in order to show, oh, this is why you are at fault. Right. So, attorney, now it's also being reported that Drake is going to be sued because he was a performer at the festival. And then there's also a rumor about Kylie Jenner is going to be sued. Can these people both be sued? Well, the, the hard thing about the United States system is anyone can be sued for anything. So can they be sued? Absolutely. Is there going to be grounds or standing or will they prevail against them? That is where the nuances come in. Nine times out of ten, Drake has an indemnification provision by him performing there, which an indemnification provision just says, hey, if something happens while I'm performing that is not my fault, you have to cover me. So even right. if Drake, Kylie Jenner, well, Kylie may be a little bit different because she's not performing, um, it's almost like a kitchen sink approach when things like this happen. We're going to sue everybody that even looked like they remotely could have been involved, and we're going to see who, what sticks against whom. But can they be sued? Yes. Will they likely prevail? Drake is a little bit of a different scenario, but again, I'm very sure that his attorneys made sure that there was an indemnification provision that is there for him. Kylie, I, I doubt it because I don't, Kylie does not have, um, from my understanding, she does not have a stake or an ownership in Astro World. Um, you know, their assets, they're not married. Um, so it's not those connections that we normally could say, okay, you're connected like this. She's just right. the girlfriend and the mother of his children. So yeah. that one not likely to prevail. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Attorney Keisha. Uh, we really uh, appreciate this. Uh, this is a lot of information. Let everybody know real quick how they can follow you in the Perry Law Group. Yes, on Instagram and Twitter, I am at Keisha Perry ESQ. Um, and also my firm is at the Perry Law Group, at Perry Law Group. Thank you guys so much for having no, thank me. You. I enjoyed it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, y'all give it up for attorney Keisha Perry Walker. <laughs> morning, morning, morning show coming up. All right, 13 before the top of the hour, y'all. It's time for Eva's Corner. Eva, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everyone. And today's Eva's Corner are for the ladies. I have a question. Ladies, have you ever reached out to a friend to let them know that their man, their significant other, was basically living foul? I need to know, are you a stay out of it type of a person or are you someone that feels like your friend needs to know what's going on? So a quick little backstory: A message came through from a young lady to another young lady that says, hey, now I'm not sure if you know this, but your boyfriend told me that you and him are not together right now. Now, I was pretty sure that was a lie, given the fact that I found your profile online and saw everything. Note that nothing happened between us, but he definitely wanted it to. Just giving you a heads up in case you guys are still dating. Hashtag girl code. Now, the girl responded saying, ladies, be this type of woman. If only she knew with some clown stuff. So, ladies, what kind of woman are you? Are you the kind of woman to put someone up on game if you know a man's secrets? Or are you someone that just minds your own business? We need to know. Mm. What do you most, think, Ricky? If you most, saw your... most ladies are getting mad for her telling them. Uh, say it, <clears> Ricky. That's so crazy. Yeah, I, 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 I seen <laughs> some stuff that stayed out of it. My own See? eyes. I know a dude that lived in some apartments where I live. Uh -huh. He was in the military, and and he went out of town, and she uh -huh. clearly through the night was having that dude at that house where he paid rent. And I want them to say nothing because they, they'll turn around and get mad at you for telling them. They will. But see, that pillar talk is much stronger than evident. You, you better talk about it, You might have all evidence Ricky. in the world, but, but when, when they, that pillar talk, next thing you know, he's storming out of the house mad at you. Yeah, you're home, exactly. you're home wrecking that. Yeah, yeah. Cause, Don't cause you let that barber, this is surely confuse you. Yeah, yeah, dude running out of there uh, uh, buckling up his uh, pants on the side. He <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. uh, Brett, you're a girl. What would you do? Is Does girl code apply here? Do you say something? Do you hold it? What do you do? Ooh, it do you, would you want to know? It, ooh, it 
it depends on who's telling me and and what their motives are. You know, I uh, yeah, this is this is yeah, I don't know. It just depends on who it is, I think, and and who it's coming yeah. from and how they're telling me. Right. All of that. Mm -hmm. All of that. What I would do, I would tell Miss Melvin and tell her to tell somebody. And then <laughs> I'm Melvin. out of it. Yeah, and I'm out of it then, so you ain't got to worry so about it. So you would go to the person, you would go up to the person that was cheating and tell them to tell the spouse or the significant other. Ooh. No, if somebody was cheating, honey, and, and we knew about this, and this person was friends with us, I would tell somebody else that, girl, he was cheating. And then <laughs> that's so move, Gary, like, that's so Gary, that's so No, but I'm out of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you get out of it, but you keep the mess going. <laughs> when it comes to me, I would do one of two things. If it's a very good friend, and I know that they need to know, and I'm in proximity, I would go up to the person while they're in the middle of the act. So if I see my friend's man out with another woman, I just walk up to the table. Ooh, Eva. And that's bold. Because, no, because Eva, because, that, ooh. That will make him have to say something. Because to Ricky's point, if I say something, no matter how true it is, I'm going to lose my friend. Mm. You're going to lose anyway because you're still going to be mad. Yeah. You got some people out there it that damn still, crazy will still turn on you and get mad for you telling them. They will, Yeah, Ricky. that's true. And, and no matter, you can have evidence, you can have pictures, you can have... All of a sudden, they'll stop talking to you and start acting funny with you. Like you did something and wrong. Like, like you did something wrong. So, right. So, that, that, yeah. So, let's go to the well, phone. Good morning. Yeah. My thought is, I really, for say, would not have to say anything to her because he would be the individual I would handle. I would let him know my stance on what I felt about him trying to say anything to me. I wouldn't tell my girlfriend anything. I'm trying to tell her, even if she don't believe you, I still try to tell her, because especially if you don't want that type of energy from him. I told my friend, we were on the phone, or she was on the phone with him, and she went to the restroom, and then I was on the phone sitting with him, and he asked me out, and I told her, but she did get mad at me, but eventually we worked it out, but, but I, I think it's right to tell people. I ain't gonna let nobody in my friend like that. The girl code is keeping it like the Benjamins, 100, and go to her and let her know. All about her no good man. Plain and simple. If you her friend, you'll keep it a hundred and take it to her. Yeah, the real friendship comes to the test on how she handled it. Cause you heard exactly. the other, exactly. other lady said she, she, the fact that she got mad at her and then they had to say, well, what is the hell? They got to sit down and work something out for when I'm just trying to be your true friend <laughs> right. and tell y'all wouldn't sit down and work nothing out. If you go, if you get mad at me for telling you something that's gonna you help you, the hell friend. with you. You right. ain't none of my friend. The exactly. hell with you. Why All right, y'all. <laughs> hit us up on <laughs> hit us up on Ricky Smiley official. Thank you, Eva. I got songs that'll be in your head all day. Coming up next, Ricky hey. Smiley Morning Show. Oh, yes, sir. Now this is a part. This is a part right here with y'all. So let's heart. Like them DeBarge songs, that El DeBarge falsetto, that voice, man, it just take you there. I love this record. Ooh. So let your little heart lay down, my darling. Yes. Oh man, that made a tear come out of the uh, like, like, like for real, bro. <laughs> man, that, man, your, man, that song right there, your tears will come out of, like both eyes <laughs> even. They'll come down <laughs> even. <laughs> it make you miss the good old days, you know. Man. Man. Ella McGarry, take me back. Now, you know that's a tearjerker. I feel like I'm going to cry. <laughs> Let it out. Because uh -oh. it's such a pretty song. You know, I mean, it's such a beautiful song. And I mean, I remember that song growing up. I think we were watching Soul Training, American Bandstand, honey. And that's when the ball just first came out. Yeah. That's, that's real love. And yes, it is real. And it's also, I mean, when you're going through something mentally. Yeah. Turn it right. This is this, this, this part. Here you go, Gary. Right here. Bring it up. Bring it up. Right here. Just right here. We know how you feel. Mm. But this mm. time love's for real. Gary said this time love's for real. I know that and that's the part that makes me cry. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. Mm -mm. So what 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 part what part got you stirred up this morning, Gary? The, the part when they say time knows just how you feel. Yeah. But this mm. time love's for real. And I mean, it's such a beautiful love song, and you know, I'm not in love with you, you know, one day maybe. <laughs> But um, don't be laughing. But um, it's just it's it's a beautiful song. Look, girl. Yeah. yeah, don't laugh. Go ahead, Gary. Express but anyway, yourself. Cause you yeah, got so, you got to talk this thing through. 
Yes, yes. I mean, so, you know, it's it, it just, I mean, you know, like when it starts, so what can I do to make you feel secure? Yes. Come on, Gary. To remove all your doubts so that you know for sure that you're the apple of my eye. I mean, Ooh. you know, I mean, if you're feeling insecure and stuff and they say this, <laughs> right, it'll tear you up. It will. We know how, Gary, we, we know Gary. how you feel, Gary. We, this, time love. this time love is for real. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah, he, he described this song perfect. It's just one yes. of the pretty songs. Mm -hmm. And it ain't even man law, Gary. And they you don't can... write songs like this. <laughs> no, they more. don't, girl. They the don't. Tissue. Lyrics. You know? Yes, the lyrics. You're the brand. apple of my eye. Who, yes, what? honey. <laughs> and, Gary, and Gary, at the end, he says, So let your little heart lay down, my darling. And so he was trying to comfort her. <laughs> yeah. To let her know, honey, you know that I'm here. <laughs> oh, my God. My nose is running. Yeah. <laughs> say that again, Rick. What you yeah, what you yeah at, at the end, Judge Faith. We got Judge Faith on the phone. Judge oh, Faith. Okay. Judge Good Faith. Morning. Good morning, Good morning. Judge, Judge Faith. Did, did you hear the end of that song? That says, so let your little heart lay down, my darling. That's the part that got Gary upset. And you on divorce court every day. Help Gary out this morning before we uh, uh, go into the segment talking. What, what, what do you think Gary might be going through, Judge Faith? Gary, is there anything else you want to share about why you're having this this moment in experience? You were not. Just, the, you know, we always play <laughs> these sad. <laughs> you know what, Judge Faith? <laughs> Judge Faith, just Judge Faith, on it. Judge Faith, I know when I watch you every day, don't have to let don't pay them no attention. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Faith, you ain't gonna. Do she keep it real. <laughs> Judge Faith. <don't> <laughs> <laughs> Speak on it. <laughs> Judge Payne, we trying to go, we trying to go down the stairs, Judge Payne. You just took us. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I got tears in my cheeks. <laughs> Judge Payne, you will not come on this show instigating this morning. <laughs> she, pulled Gary, she pulled Gary into her chambers. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she is everyone's favorite TV judge, and you can catch her trying to save marriages on divorce court. Y'all, please welcome my good friend, the one and only Judge Faith Jenkins. <laughs> so excited to be with y'all this morning. We are always happy to have you on the show, and congratulations on your new book. Sister, don't settle. How to stay smart in matters of the heart. Uh, this is a really good book. Tell us, uh, what made you decide to write this, and what you know? What do people have to look forward to? Uh, thank you so much. I, um, you know, I've been dealing with thousands of women on issues in their relationships for many years. I started in New York with family court, and then uh, just throughout my career, Judge Faith, and now on divorce court. And of course, uh, a year and eight months ago, I got married myself. And so I share not only my professional experiences, but also pull from my personal life on how to really be smart and make better decisions in relationships to manifest the love that you really deserve. Now, you know, we're coming up on the holidays, and I used right. to get this question a, a lot, Ricky, and men get this question too, not just women. We're right. coming up on the holidays, you go home, and people used to always ask me, well, well I don't understand, why are you still single? Right. And that, that it, used, it started to weigh on me, and because it, I thought, well, if I'm not married by a certain age, does that mean that there's something wrong with me? Is that a byproduct of something being off within me? Or is right. everyone supposed to be married? Is it something I need to explain or justify? And so the first part of the book is really encouraging single women, single people. When the questioning comes for you, how do you handle that? And how do you stay grounded in who you are so that you don't rush, make a mistake, and end up in, in front of me in my courtroom? Right, right, that's <laughs> right. right. Now, Judge, you've seen hundreds of relationships come across your court. Now, what would you say your best piece of advice is to couples before they get married? Mm, I've never seen a couple come before me and say, wow, I wish we would have moved faster. Mm, uh, the ones time, with then. a lot of the issues, mm -hmm. they say, we wish we would have taken our time. We wish we would have gotten to know the other person better. And the other thing is, um, they wish they would have accepted the person for who they are. A lot of people want to marry potential, but you're dating their reality. 
Mm. Uh, the, the two of them mm. should be one and the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so a marriage doesn't change anything. It may change your last name. Right. Uh, right. Uh, weddings break the bank, but they don't break bad habits. Come on. Now. Right. Wow. Right. So right. Wow. Accept a person for who they are, That's right. and then you, when when you get married, because there's no radical magic wand that makes marriage change anyone. <laughs> okay. You hear that, girl? Wow. I hear. It. Wow. <laughs> okay. So just, you. Just uh, reminded us that you did get married last year to the amazing Kenny Lattimore. So how yes. did you? Yes. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't believe it's been almost two years. First of all, and then you know we started. We got married, and five days later, the whole world shut down because of the pandemic so i thought well you mean to tell me i waited all this time and i only get to be married five days before the world ends <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right 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 so uh but but it's been great i i say on divorce court a lot and gary i know you've heard me because you watch the show yes. often you know it's um really how it's easy to be good to someone and be nice to someone when things are going great if you really want to know the true character of a person especially in relationships how do you treat each other when you're going through adversity when you're going through a pandemic when all of a sudden you're in quarantine together and what i learned is um you know we were really there for each other and able to hold each other down during that really scary and difficult time so it's been really good and also been one of the inspirations uh, for me writing this book to encourage women. I am in such a, a loving, a happy marriage, and I wanted to share some of the keys, some of the secrets that got me there. Because I didn't have these huge standards of love growing up in my life. A lot right. of things I had to figure out through trial and error. Right. Right. Well, and, and you talked about dating for 15 years. And speaking of Kenny, how did you know that? he was the one was there one particular thing that happened that let you know that he was the one yeah him on stage singing i'm just i'm just joking <laughs> okay that's what i do sing your drawers off <laughs> this song was know. my wedding song okay you know what? I, I think that i think you have to know you and know who you are when you're making decisions in love and relationships you have your list of negotiables your, your non-negotiables, and you stick with it no matter who comes in your life. If you know you don't want to date long distance, I don't want to hear you complaining about this guy you're talking to who lives in Dubai. It just it doesn't make any sense. So uh, with, with Kitty Cave Along, I knew the things that I wanted in my life, and when he lined up with those things, I thought, this is great. And then an, a, an even bigger equation, a part of that was just the peace that came from the relationship. Um, you know, Women of words, we don't tolerate complicated relationships. If you don't know where you stand with someone, that is where you stand. So just all the clarity and the peace and all of those things that came into play, it really was the perfect combination at the right time in our lives. See, that's why everybody needs to get this book. And I'm telling y'all yes. something. Don't, 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 don't get it twisted. Judge Faith is, uh, uh, one of the smartest, uh, uh, most awesome judges out here. Uh, used to be on MSNBC, Politics Nation, uh, kind of like in the background, you know, with the, uh, with the movement, you know, for, for civil rights and social justice or whatever. In the, uh, the name of the book is called Sister Don't Settle. How to Stay Smart in Matters of the Heart. And this is a book. That you should definitely, definitely read. Uh, let everybody know how they can get this book. It, uh, Ricky is sold everywhere. Books are sold. It just came out a few days ago. Uh, again, it's a roadmap. It's a guide, real practical advice on how to deal with rejection, how to deal with forgiveness, how to make smart decisions when you're dating. I really tried to put everything in there that I would have wanted to know when I was figuring out life and love. Oh my God! I'm so excited, man. Uh, hey, ladies and gentlemen, y'all get and congratulations on everything. And tell Kenny we said what's up, and we just absolutely love y'all, and we love you on our TV every single day. We watch your show. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Y'all, ladies and gentlemen, y'all give it up and show your love for the one and only Judge Faith Jenkins. <laughs> Make sure y'all go get that book, y'all. More Rick Smiley Morning Show coming up. All right, Rick Smiley Morning Show, 26 minutes after the hour, y'all. The front page news is being brought to you by America's Best. At America's Best, you never over, overpay for eyewear. Get two pairs and a free quality eye exam for just $69.95. It's not just a better deal. It's America's Best. Eva, good morning. 
Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. I'm your girl, Eva Marcel, here with a quick look at your front page news. In very sad news, a nine-year-old boy from Dallas became the 10th and youngest person to die in the Astro World Festival tragedy. The boy was trampled during a crowd surge at the concert and had been in a medically induced coma. His family is now seeking at least $1 million in damages, and he was one of more than 300 people that were injured. Some had heart attacks, dozens were hospitalized in critical condition afterward. Meanwhile, closing arguments are set today in the Kyle Rittenhouse murder trial. Rittenhouse is accused of fatally shooting two men and injuring a third during a racial justice protest last summer in Kenosha, Wisconsin. The 18-year-old Rittenhouse's defense has argued that he fired in self-defense. And last but certainly not least, the update we've all been waiting for. President Biden is expected to sign the roughly $1 trillion infrastructure bill today. Now, the bill will mark historic levels of spending for projects across the country. Biden will also host a virtual meeting with China's leader today. Both countries are looking to reduce tension between the two of them. All right, that was a quick look at your front page news. For more news, go ahead and log on to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Show.com. Rock T, the sports genius. What's going down in sports? Well, let's talk a little bit about some football, man. How about them Dallas Cowboys? First of all, man, they blow out the Atlanta Falcons, treated them like a doggone Pee Wee Pop Warner football team. God. It wasn't even a yeah, game, man. man. <laughs> man. New, England, New England did the same thing to the Cleveland Browns, man. And, um,. Let me. Here's why I want to talk about the Detroit Lions Pittsburgh Steelers game. Now we know Detroit still hadn't won a game. They 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 just sorry this year. Pittsburgh tied them in overtime. But former NFL quarterback and wide receiver Terrell Pryor, he gets on social media and says, "Man, Detroit Lions quarterback Jared Goff is terrible." He says he and or Colin Kaepernick can get on the field right now and do better than that. He said he's terrible. <laughs> but when you ain't wow. won a game, the quarterback. Gonna get you're gonna get the blame for it, and when you lose and when you win games, quarterback gonna get props for it. So it kind of comes along with the territory. In the meantime, Oklahoma lost to the Baylor Bears, so hmm. you can eliminate them trying to even get into the uh, playoffs. That, that ain't gonna happen. Michigan beat Penn State, Ohio State beat Purdue, uh, Cincinnati they still undefeated. They ten and zero. They they rank number five. I know everybody. Be nice if they play somebody. Yeah, I mean, I get it. The strength of schedule ain't even close to like the SEC schedules, but they undefeated and they was number two at one point in time. So a lot of the critics are saying you got to give them a shot until they lose. You know, it is what it is. But can we shout out to Jackson State right quick, man? Come on. Comeback victory over Southern to clinch the SWAC East title. They nine and one. JSU will play for the SWAC championship for the first time since 2013. They either play Alcorn or P. TV. So everything's going to kind of come down to the end over these last couple of weeks, man. So uh, this is getting exciting, man. So big up to Deion Primetime Sanders. Uh, it was good to see him back on the sideline. He was in a wheelchair because he had some difficulty with the surgery that he had on his foot. And his, uh, his son, the quarterback, came over and gave him a big old huge hug, man. Like, I appreciate you, Pops. And, you know, it was really, it got, oh, yeah, that it got was really emotional, man. Yeah, so, man. That was, yeah. Loved yeah. it. Loved it. It is what it is. That's what I got right there. Brad got the hot spot. What's up? The hot spot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot and this hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the B-R-A-T. Hey, it's the bottom of the hour, y'all. And real quick, man, uh, shout out to Brad. Uh, set it off. It was live uh, Friday and Saturday uh, in Dallas. And uh, the Martin Lit Tour was live Friday and Saturday in Dallas yes. and in Houston. So we was both in Texas uh, on stage performing, and it felt so good to be on stage. We just want to say to all the fans, thank you, thank you, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. What up, Brett? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brett Tad Tad, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. Disney Marvel's Eternals ranked in $27.4 in the second weekend out, topping the box office again, despite the worst reviews for a Marvel film ever. Venom crossed the $200 million mark in North America and the second to do so since COVID. Uh, meanwhile, Paramount's Clifford the Red Dog brought in $20 million, beating the expectations of $15 to $17 million. Now let's get off into this hot spot real deep because Benny Siegel says that Kanye don't owe him a dime after he created the name and coined Yeezy. 
So, Seeker revealed after Kanye's Drink Champs interview that Ye admitted to owing him $50 million and 5% stock in the Yeezy brand. Now, in the interview, Seeker said as far as his business mind and where he took it, you know, Kanye worked hard for his. Kanye don't owe me nothing. However, Seeker did reveal that in exchange, he would take, he said, you say, you know, somebody uh, uh, give you a fish. He said, you're going to eat that fish for a day. He said, but if you teach somebody how to fish, you're going to eat forever. And he's right. going to teach his family how to fish. He said, I'm not even thinking about a number, but I would love to do some business where I can earn some money. He said, because I'm an earner. I've never been the type to take this for a handout. He said, I got a lot of business ventures, and I think me and Kanye could sit down and have an opportunity. I could present it to him. And you know, it's a money-making thing, and it's on the table, and it's money that I can earn. So that's what's up, Beanie Seeker, because most of the people would be like, no, you said it. You said that I got receipts. I want my fifty million and my five percent stock. So right. you know what I'm saying? That, 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 I yep. probably would be one of them. Like, oh I'll no, right you said you. it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your word, cause you got it, bruh. All right, moving on. In other Kanye news, he dropped his Donda Deluxe album last night. In addition to the 27 original tracks, there are five new songs, including "Up from the Ashes," "Remote Control Part 2, "Never Abandon Your Family," "Keep My Spirit Alive Part 2, and "Life of the Party" featuring Andre 3000, which Drake previously leaked amid their ongoing feud. Cuddy is now featured on the Young Thug Assisted Remote Control Part 2. And to promote the deluxe album, uh, Ye Lookalikes wearing prosthetic masks all over the streets of New York this weekend and billboards popped up in L.A. and NYC. That would be scary to see people with them prosthetic masks because it, it looked crazy to me. It looked like, uh, what's that movie where the people was killing people? Uh, uh -oh. I can't, uh. Man, I can't, y'all know what I'm talking about. we like, ooh. Uh -oh. <laughs> they had the same Y'all know what I'm talking about. Huh? They all wore like masks. It don't matter. Every, every robbery move. The purge. The purge. I think it was yes. like the purge. Yeah, yes. yeah. Kind of scary to me, but I guess since we wear masks anyway, maybe it could be used as a form of protection. All right, y'all. Y'all got to get ready because the Versus is announced that Bone Thugs and Harmony is set to go up against 3 6 Mafia, y'all. Oh, Ooh. yeah. I'm down oh, for that. man. The battle was going to take place December 2nd, live from Los Angeles. I wonder who they going to bring on stage. Ooh, they got to oh, bring Project Fanny in. Oh, yeah, you know they is. And this one for you, Gary, because initially she turned down this versus, but now Shaka Khan and Stephanie Mills is going oh, head to head. Oh, uh -uh, that's yes, two good people. Yes, in the upcoming mm -hmm. versus. And it's going to be a make sure Shaka Khan don't have nothing to drink. <laughs> <laughs> but, Ricky, she was good the week before last, baby. Oh, Gotta make sure now, cause you know Jazz in the Garden still remember. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. She likes a refreshing uh -oh. beverage. She honey, likes but, a refreshing you know. beverage. Let's keep it down to a minimum. <laughs> Two drink yeah. minimum. Two drink minimum. Uh, November 18th is when that's gonna happen. All right, y'all. We gonna wrap up the hot spot on that note. But coming up next, we got Mark Moriel with the State of America, and we got the Praise Mix Down. The time now is 25 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome National Urban League President and CEO Mark Moriel. Yeah, with this morning's commentary on state of black America. Mr. Mark, we happy to have you. And the members of the United States Senate will be getting a report card this week when it comes to grading their commitment to democracy and voting rights. So tell us about this uh, civil rights scorecard. Hey, Ricky, good morning. Good morning to you and good morning to your listening audience. First, I want to let everyone know this afternoon I'll be at the White House uh, with the president and the vice president uh, for the signing of the Jobs and Infrastructure Bill. And I'm really excited because that bill is going to pump uh, billions of dollars into the infrastructure, roads, bridges, airports, ports, water systems, broadband. And we'll be working to ensure that black America gets its fair share of the 11 million jobs that that uh, will create. But the next big fight is voting rights. And the NAACP, National Urban League, National Action Network, National Coalition of Black Civic Participation, Fighting for Our Vote Initiative, and the National Council of Negro Women have come together to grade. And, Ricky, this is a midterm grade. Right. Members of the Senate, when it comes to voting rights, the Civil Rights Scorecard, first of its kind, where all of us have come together, and we've said we're going to grade the members of the Senate on their participation in their vote and their advocacy on voting rights. Uh, many senators got an A, a lot got an F, some got an I. And scores can, in fact, change. So what are we grading? Are you in favor of the Freedom to Vote Act? Are you in favor of the John Lewis uh, Voting Rights Advancement Act? Are you willing to set aside, carve out, reform the filibuster to pass those bills if it is necessary? It is so important now that we throw a bright light 
on the actions, not just the words, of members of the Senate, even those that we may have voted for, uh, because this fight for democracy is a fight against the pernicious, diabolical, hateful, divisive effort to marginalize uh, the civil rights victories of the 60s, but really to marginalize our power and our vote. Right. So this civil rights scorecard, which I encourage everyone to go and take a look at, is the beginning of stepped-up advocacy uh, by all of us to pass these two voting rights bills. All roads lead to voting rights. The infrastructure bill is passed. Uh, the second component of the bill is expected to pass. The package is, is expected to pass in the next few weeks. All roads lead to voting rights. And what we've got to do is say black America is insistent, unyielding, demanding that this Senate, this Senate uh, do what is right, do what is correct, and pass these two voting rights bills. And if the, if the filibuster must be carved out, so be it. They've carved it out for all sort of things, Ricky. There's 160 exceptions to the filibuster. Why not? You carve it out for trade promotion. You carve it out for reconciliation. You must carve it out for democracy and the protection of voting. So right. the Civil Rights Scorecard, uh, we want everyone in the community, the black community, all of our allies all across the nation, to go see how your senator is graded and then contact your senator. If they have an A, tell them you've got to keep an A. If they have an I, they need to be in encouraged that they do the right thing to make that. If they got an F, they need to reverse course. So it's a civil rights scorecard. Uh, we're very, very uh, fired up about this new effort to bring transparency. No more double talk. No more okie doke. We just want to vote in favor of democracy. Ricky, that's the state of black America today. Follow me at Mark Morial, at Matt Urban League, across social media to continue this conversation. Uh, and I'll be tweeting out from the White House uh, this afternoon. Man, thank you so much for coming on this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please help me give it up for the former New Orleans mayor and Louisiana state senator who is currently the president of the National Urban League, Mark Morial. Thank you so yeah, much for joining us, Mr. Mark, and we appreciate you keeping us up to date on the state of black America. Have a great day, man. We'll see you soon, brother. Thank yes, you. sir. More Rick Smiley Morning Show coming up.